there's a lot of confusion around the difference between tracks and channels. To create a track in Reaper, we can just go over here and double click, and that'll create a track. Create another one below, and so on. Now on these tracks, we could put media, which could be a mono file, a stereo file, or a multi-channel file, or even MIDI or video. But within each track, we could have a certain amount of channels, which is streams of audio that we can hear. And by default, if we go to the routing on the track, we can see it starts with two channels of audio, one for the left and one for the right, which is based on your speakers or your headphones, as we typically have two. Although we could change how many channels on each track right here. We could use four all the way up to 64. But we're only going to hear the first two unless we set up multiple speakers on our system, like for rear speakers or surround 5.1 or 7.1 or so on. But typically, we just have two speakers. So we're only going to hear two channels, left and right. But let's bring in an audio file. Let's go to my hard drive. And I'm going to choose a mono kick audio file right here. Just drag it in and drop it. And as we could see, it's a mono audio file, as we're just seeing one stream of audio. And if we hit play, we'll hear it. And if you look at the meters over here, we're seeing two meters. Even though there's one channel of audio. Because like I said before, Reaper starts off with two channels on each track. So even though we're using a mono file, it's coming out of two channels on your system, the left and right, with both channels being the same. But if we bring in a stereo file instead, let's bring in this synth and drop it. Now we can see this file has two channels, left and right. And if we play it, we'll see two channels on our meter. But they should look a bit different, as each channel is not exactly the same, which makes the synth sound wider, like this. So in this situation, we have two channels of audio playing through this track using two channels on this track. Now let's bring in a multi-channel file. Over here, I have a synth and a vocal. Let's drag it in and drop it. And we can see this audio has four channels two channels of a synth, and two channels of a vocal. And we'll see it on the meter. And if we go to the routing, we can see that by default, Reaper made this track four channels. It noticed the file had four channels of audio, so it made the track a four channel track, which we'll see on the meters. But notice, we're only hearing the first two. Because like I said, we only have two speakers or two channels on our headphones. So we're not hearing our vocal. So in Reaper, we need to create a way of hearing the extra channels through our speakers. And one way we could do it is by adding a plugin. Let's go to the effects on this track. And let's choose the plugin Channel Mapper Down Mixer. Double click it. And that adds this plugin to this track. And we can see over here by default, each channel is coming in and going out on the same number. So if we play it now, nothing's going to change. We're still just going to hear our synth. But we can see this audio on 3 and 4. So if we switch it, so the 3 and 4 is going out 1 and 2, we'll hear everything together, like this. Hey, don't call me up, I know you know what you did, so I'm turning the radio up. So that's one way of hearing all the channels at the same time. We could just hear our vocal. Hey, don't call me up. I'm we'll just hear our synth. Or both of them blended. Hey, don't call me up. I know you know. And we could also do this by using separate tracks. Let's delete this plugin and instead 
let's turn off the audio on this track. If we go back to the routing, we could turn off the master send, which normally sends to channel one and two, our speakers. And now we're not going to hear anything on this track. But now we could send these channels to new tracks and separate them so we could blend them separately. Let's create two new tracks. I'll name this one synth and this one vocal. And now we could send just channel one and two to this one, grab the routing and drag it to here. Notice the cursor changes to a patch cable, letting us know we're creating a send. And if we let go, it creates a send right here, sending one and two to one and two on this track, which is what we want. So now we're just going to hear the synth on this track. Now we can send the vocal from this track to this track. Just grab it and drop it down here and switch from one and two to three and four. So now we're sending three and four to one and two on this track. So we should just hear the vocal over here. Hey, don't call me up. So we could blend it with the volume on each track, as we're not hearing anything from this track. Hey, don't call me up. I know you know what you did. Turn the radio up. Don't wanna hear it. It's too late for apologize. So that's another way of separating our channels so we could blend them separately. Now this is also going to matter for recording. Let's delete these tracks and create another one. What's going to record on this track? Now my audio interface has eight channels. So for me, I can record on mono using one, two, all the way up to input eight. If you only have one channel, you're just going to have one choice or two or four, but you can record in mono using any of the inputs you have. And if you have two or more, you can record in stereo using one and two, three and four, and so on, which will create a stereo file. And if we change this track to multi-channel, let's go to the routing and switch it to four channels. If we have four inputs on our interface, we can record four channels at once, creating a multi-channel file using one through four, two through five, or so on. And with my interface, I can choose eight channels and record eight channels at once using input one through eight. Now you're probably wondering, why would you want to do that? Record multi-channel files instead of separate channels using different tracks. Well, one way is if you're recording a source with multi-channels, but all recording one instrument. For example, recording drums. Let's bring in a multi-channel drum track. I got one here and just drop it. And as we can see, there's four channels on this audio. One for kick, one for snare, and two for overheads. But if I play it now, we're only gonna hear the kick and snare. And again, by default, if we go to the routing, Reaper automatically made this track four channels because the audio had four channels in it. But if I play it, it's going to sound a bit weird. As we're just hearing these two channels with the kick in the left and the snare on the right, and not hearing the overheads at all. But this is still useful for recording because if I wanted to edit my drums, I could treat it all as one instrument. So I could edit all my drums together. And then for monitoring, I could just create separate tracks and send each channel to it like this. Let's create three more tracks. Let's name the first one kick and then snare and then overheads. And we'll go to the first track in the routing and turn off the master parent send. So we're not going to hear our drums through this track. But now we could send the different channels to different tracks. Create a send from here to here and just send mono channel one, which is our kick. And do the same with the snare, but just send mono channel two, which is our snare. And then for the overheads, 
we're just going to send stereo, but three and four. So now we have a kick from here, a snare from here, and the overheads here. So we can edit our drums on this track, but mix them using these tracks. Perfect. So that's a typical use where you'd record a multi-channel file and then send it to separate tracks for mixing. We could also use different channels to create side chaining. So let's import a mono kick file from our hard drive into Reaper. Right here, drag and drop it. Let's also bring in our synth right here. And together they sound like this. And again, our kick is mono and our synth is stereo. So there's two channels on each track, which we could check in the routing. Two channels. Let's say I wanted to sidechain our synth using the kick as a trigger. We could add a compressor to the synth. Let's choose the rear comp compressor, which looks like this. And for our detector input, we could change it from the main inputs to auxiliary inputs. And then we could use this as a sidechain. Just go to the routing on our kick and drag and drop it. And notice it's going to send our kick from one and two to three and four on the synth. So now we have four channels on our synth, with three and four being used as a sidechain, creating effects like this. very common in electronic dance music. And again, if we check our routing on the synth, it's now changed to four channels, as channel one and two is for the synth, and three and four is for the kick that's triggering the sidechain, giving us the effect we're hearing here. Now there's one other way we could adjust the channels on each track, and that's using the channel modes. Let's delete all this, and let's bring in that synth and vocal, which if you remember, is the four channel file we used in part one of the video. Over here, and if we right click the file, we can go to the item settings, and we can come down over here and check out the different channel modes. With normal, we're gonna get left and right being left and right. We could also reverse it right here with right and left being switched. We could also do this in the media item properties. We could just double click this file, which opens up the properties and change the channel mode here. Again, normal, left is left and right is right. We could reverse it so right is left and left is right. Or we can make it mono, hit OK, and just hear it in the middle of our two speakers blended together. Or we can make it mono using just the left or just the right. But down over here, we could choose the extra channels. So let's choose on the stereo to just hear stereo one and two. So now we're just gonna see and hear our synth. But remember, this file is multi-channel using four channels but we're just going to hear and see the first two in stereo. But now we could duplicate this track and do the opposite with this one. Double click it, go to stereo and switch it to three and four. So now we're just going to hear three and four on this track, even though both files are the same. But we have the vocal over here. Hey, don't call me up. And the synth over here. Which we could blend using our faders. Hey, don't call me up. I know you know what you did. So the 
And we can do the same thing with our drums. Let's delete this. Let's import that drum file from the first video. Right here, drag and drop it. And again, this track has four channels. The first channel being the kick, the second channel being the snare, and the third and fourth channel being the overheads. But we could double click it and switch it to just mono left. Now we're just going to hear our kick. We could duplicate it again and make this one the snare by switching it to mono right. Just do the same thing again. Duplicate this track. And for this one, we'll switch it to stereo, but three and four. And now we have the overheads on this track. So you can blend them all together, but keep in mind, all these files are exactly the same. We just chose a different channel mode so we could hear and just see what we want on each track. So that's another way we could divide our channels between different tracks and just hear the channels we want to hear. So that's pretty much it. That's how to work with channels in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go. Oh.